Hello and welcome to the weekly VM Campos Comic Book Club. I'm your host, VM Campos. This is a series where I count down the top 10 first issues releasing this week on New Comic Book Day. All these picks come from the Previews World website. Check the description for links. Today's episode is for Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. Let's get started. At number 10, I picked America Chavez, Made in the USA number 1, from Marvel Comics, written by Kalinda Vasquez and art by Carlos Gomez. I'm picking this issue because we've got Carlos Gomez, who previously worked on Amazing Mary Jane, which had pretty cool art, and it's written by Kalinda Vasquez, who worked on Marvel's Runaways. That was another enjoyable book as well. The plot is this is a brand new story where we learn what made America Chavez who she is and what she'll do to protect the ones she loves. So America is a relatively new character to the Marvel pantheon, but I don't doubt she is going to make the leap to the MCU very soon. Number 9, Dead Dogs Bite, number 1 of 4. This is from Dark Horse Comics. We've got Tyler Boss as the writer and the artist. I kind of like that, where we've got the full creative control by one person doing the writing and the art. You can kind of see this whole auteur aspect of things. So what's the plot? Cormac Guffin has gone missing, and all hope rests on the slouching shoulders of her best friend, Joe. Now I like that the blurb says, this is a story of a riddle wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in a candy wrapper, and further says Twin Peaks meets Larry Bird. So that's pretty interesting to see where that description leads us, but I'm sold on this being Twin Peaks inspired, as I love that genre of weird, freaky mystery shows. And the cover seems very mysterious, so I'm on board. Number 8 is DC Comics Infinite Frontier number 0. This has got various writers and artists because this is a little anthology series. It's a sort of a prequel to things. The blurb states, Dark Knight's death metal presented the darkest threats to the multiverse. DC Future State revealed what may lie ahead. Now it's time to look into the infinite frontier of the current day DC Universe. So we have a variety of artists and writers putting together a variety of stories in their own various styles, where they put their own spin on various characters. So that's why this is a pick. I like these anthology types of series and wish that the comic publishers would do more of them. I think that's a great entry point to more people enjoying more comics. Number seven, at IDW Publishing, I picked Marvel Action, Captain Marvel number one. Now, didn't we recently have a Captain Marvel number one over at IDW? Yes, we did. So yeah, this is, this is yet another number one in, in, in the series. Now, this is the more all ages version of things because this is from IDW. IDW seems to have the license to publish these more all-ages or younger readers types of comics, where the main continuity and the, the rated T stuff is over at the main Marvel publisher. This is written by Sam Maggs and art by Isabel Escalante. I really like this Sweeney Boo cover. I like this cartoony aspect of things. And the interior art is even cuter by Isabel Escalante. I'm on board. The plot is that Ghost Spider, aka Spider Gwen, aka Gwen Stacy, introduces Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, to the latest internet craze, Click Clock, and things get a little crazy. Number six is another DC Comics book, Crime Syndicate Number One, written by Andy Schmidt and art by Kieran McEwen and Brian Hitch. This is a six-issue miniseries where we witness the true origins of the malevolent makers of mayhem known as the Crime Syndicate. This has a backup story, which the Future State books have been doing, and I appreciate that. We've got the main story and then a backup story. So these are dark versions of the famous characters over at Earth 3. Moving to number 5, I picked Chariot number 1 from Artists, Writers, and Artisans, aka AWA Upshot. Actually, I'm still confused. Is it simply AWA? Is it AWA Upshot? Is Upshot a subsidiary? I gotta look this up. But anyway, written by Brian Hill, art by Priscilla Petrates, with a couple of variant covers. This story is really interesting. The Chariot was a Cold War era secret weapon built into the form of a supercharged muscle car. So this is taking the DeLorean trope of a time machine in a car, and here we have a government super weapon in a car. It sank into the ocean decades ago, 
and now a petty criminal stumbles upon it. I love the art by Petrates. It's got this great realistic quality to great realistic quality to it. Variety of panel designs and the colors are beautiful. This this 80s neon glow style of things. Image Comics takes spot number four with Noctera number one. Written by Scott Snyder, art by Tony Daniel and Tomeu More. Various covers are out there. I like the one by Jock a lot. So in this story, it's been 10 years after the world plunged into darkness, and the only thing that keeps the monsters away are the artificial lights that humans cling to. Valentina Val Riggs transports important cargo through the deadly unlit roads in her heavily illuminated 18-wheeler. So it reminds me a little bit of Mad Max Fury Road, plus a sci-fi horror book all rolled into one. Number three at Marvel Comics, I picked Demon Days X-Men number one. And the reason that I picked this comic, two words, Peach Momoko. Peach Momoko has been one of the best artists to come out recently in the world of comics. I always pick up her covers as often as I can. And what do we get here? A book written and illustrated by Peach Momoko in the world of the X-Men. So her inimitable style permeates the whole book. And this is a, I believe, six-issue miniseries. So non-stop Peach Momoko in this. What's the story? Do not care. I just want to pick it up for the Momoko art, and then I'm sure I'll still love the Momoko story. At number two, I pick James Bond, Agent of Spectre number one, published by Dynamite. Written by Christos Cage, art by Luca Casalanguida, and cover art by Steve Epting. This is part one of a miniseries. There's a civil war brewing within Spectre. An upstart is attempting a coup, which forces Blofeld to recruit James Bond himself to keep his power. Now it sounds like James Bond is gonna then try to bring Spectre down from the inside, but will he succeed or will this be a dark path which he cannot return from? Internal art is a very realistic, gritty style of art, which I appreciate. Now if you know a little bit about James Bond, you know that this is an interesting take on the mythos because here he's infiltrating Spectre and getting corrupted by it. So if you can't get the next James Bond movie fast enough, how about this next James Bond comic? And the number one first issue of this week is Berserker, number one, published by Boom Studios. We've got written by Matt Kint, art by Ron Garney, cover art by Raphael Grandpa, and wait a minute, co-written by Keanu Reeves. This book is already flying off the shelves via pre-orders, and good luck getting one on the shelves if you simply walk in. That's why you've got to be subscribed to the YouTube channel and be on the lookout for my new comics coming soon, where I alert you to new comics coming soon far in advance, one minute at a time. So check those out on my YouTube. But anyway, as for the review here, the man known only as Berserker is half mortal, half god, cursed, and compelled to violence, even at the sacrifice of his sanity. So the main character looks like Keanu Reeves, and we don't doubt that this will be a movie at some point. So if you're into comics as the basis of movies, get this book. If you're into stories by interesting writers, get this book. And if you're into Keanu Reeves, get this book. Berserker number one. And that's my top ten list for this week, Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. What do you think? Did I get it right? What did I miss? Give me a reply, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And consider going over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos, where you can unlock exclusive content and tier rewards. That's all starting at $1, patreon.com slash vmcampos. I hope you become part of the VMC crew by pledging at the Patreon. It really makes me feel good when people pledge and help me out, or helping out any creators. It really keeps us going, it keeps us motivated. If you can't pledge at the moment, no worries. Simply follow for free on Patreon to be alerted to everything that I do. Regarding comic book reviews, previews, monthly hauls, reviews, shorts, all that good stuff. Patreon.com slash VMCompos. This has been the weekly VMCompos Comic Book Club, and I'll see you next week.